Every four years, like clockwork, a group of people who should really have anything better to do come together in the spirit of competition. However, despite the potential respectability of the Enterprise, it's quite often the case that the entire thing gets marred by scandal, petty grudges, and jingoistic posture. But we're not here to talk politics, we're here to talk about the Olympics. And like clockwork, ever since 2007 at least, if there's an Olympic competition, Mario and Sonic are there to rake in a huge pile of money and continue to spit on the prognostications of video game magazine editors from decades past. But now they're going to do it all with British accents. Because it's London, after all. Governor. I'll spare you my horrible Graham Chapman and drag vocal affectation and get right down to it. It's another Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. And this trend seems to show no signs of stopping. Frankly, I'm fine with that since these games are held to a higher standard than your usual Olympic mini-game compilation would be. This is Mario and Sonic. This is the dream bout. Screw that Tyson guy. I commented in my review of their Beijing 2008 outing that while it's a decent game, there was some room for improvement. Well, the wheels of progress turn, and not just because they've added a cycling event. Also debuting in the London games are the discus, uneven bars, ribbon gymnastics, synchronized swimming, badminton, equestrian show jumping, beach volleyball, soccer, and canoeing, as well as more video gamey dream versions of several events. That said, the line between game and straight athletic competition is blurred even more in this outing. You have power shots available in volleyball and badminton's regular modes in direct violation of not only Olympic rules, but petty details like the laws of physics. On the other hand, here we have Metal Sonic on a horse. This argument is invalid. In place of Beijing's circuit mode, a new London party competition pits four players on a head-to-head-to-head-to-head... -to -head -to -head I'm sorry, what? Sticker collecting? This is what people do at the Olympics? A likely story. Anyway, you pilot your character through a representation of central London, interacting with NPCs who occasionally kick off mini-games, collecting items to better hound passers-by, and generally waiting around until Big Ben chimes, indicating the beginning of the competition. An event commences, the winners receive more stickers, the first to X number of stickers wins. Then the losers' bodies are dumped in the Thames. A great time had by all. Start. If that activity wasn't shady enough for you, there are plenty of opportunities to gamble by obsessing over the scratch-off tickets you receive for completing events and London parties. Occasionally, you'll receive fashion gear for your Mii participants. Occasionally, you'll receive music from the histories of these storied franchises. Most often, though, you'll receive not. Too bad for you. Fortunately, there's a market for failed tickets, and you can turn them in for the gear you didn't win. In the spirit of sporting competition, Mario and Sonic have improved on their last record. I wouldn't normally relish playing a simulated javelin throw, but there's just something about the game that makes it feel... fun. And that's really what it's supposed to be about, isn't it? Forget the endorsement deals, breakfast cereals, and nationalism. It's supposed to be about fun. That said, every record is there to be broken, and you can always improve. I guess I'll be seeing them again in Rio in 2016.